in this uh, session let's start uh, looking at uh, the options market uh, especially uh, the aspects relating uh, to the valuations of the options and uh, how do i create arbitrage opportunities using uh, options and uh, a few more aspects relating to the greeks of the option so like uh, talking about uh, uh, the delta the vega the rho all these kind of greeks that are associated with the options so and even we will uh, talk about uh, <coughs> the impact of various underlying factors on uh, the option pricing and finally uh, also we will uh, uh, discuss a little bit about the options on forwards and future contracts so these are uh, some of the aspects that we are uh, working out uh, here we'll uh, go step by step the valuations uh, again there are the as far as the valuation is concerned probably we are uh, looking at option valuations uh, for equity options for bond options or even for uh, interest rate related securities interest rate related options so there are uh, so many uh, applications and again in the valuation methods we will look at uh, different kinds of methods so that's how we will uh, take this entire session wherever uh, excel based uh, demonstrations are required even those things will be looked at so let's get uh, started into the session now the first thing uh, as far as uh, this is uh, this session is concerned is one of the most important aspects in uh, uh, in uh, option pricing is the put call parity relationship so what does that put call parity uh, relationship talk about the cost of the fiduciary call should be the same as the cost of the protective put what is a fiduciary call having a call option plus purchasing a call option plus a risk free bond having a risk free bond a call option plus having a risk free bond is what we are calling as a fiduciary call having the underlying plus a put option is what we call as <coughs> a protective put strategy typically long stock plus long put is what is the protective put strategy and uh, the long call plus long bond is what uh, we call as a fiduciary call strategy and what it uh, says is because the payoffs of these two things are the same we can very well uh, say their present values which is c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t which is like having a buying a call option today and having a cash to the worth of x by 1 plus r to the power t should be the same as the spot price of the stock plus the put option price so this relationship is what we are calling as the call put parity relationship right now <coughs> the goodness of this relationship is you can do small arithmetics like okay if i want c only you can say s plus p minus x by 1 plus r to the power t what does this mean to me c is nothing but the call option so c can be created without c by using a combination of these three items that is what uh, is the meaning of the synthetic call option means i am synthetically able to create the position of a call option without using the call option using these three 
So how can I create that position? Probably a long call position. If I want long this side, I will go for I'll go for long stock. Means I'll buy the share plus long put. I'll buy a put option on the share and short bond. Short bond is I am selling a bond. Selling a bond or issuing a bond. Issuing a bond <coughs> and raising capital. Using that capital, I am buying a share as well as buying a put option. So when I have done this kind of an exercise, the payoff is exactly similar to that of a call option. So that is where we call this kind of uh, settlements as the synthetic position. So when I am talking about buying a call, it's as good as uh, buying a put, buying the stock and shorting a riskless pure discount bond whose uh, value is equal to the present value of the exercise price. So in that case, we are creating the position of a call option without using the call option same way you can play around right similarly if i want uh, the put uh, option i can very well create it as c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t minus s which is as good as i can synthetically create a put option by going long on the call buying the mm, buying a bond <coughs> and selling shorting a stock right now so this position will synthetically create a put option position now why are we discussing about these positions the most important thing that we are going to derive from this is see for the put option also there is a market price and there is one price which we are able to compute using this synthetic position. So if the synthetic as well as actuals, if there is a difference between these two, for that matter any position, we can actually create four synthetic positions. We can create synthetic call, synthetic bond, synthetic stock, synthetic put. Any of these uh, four synthetic positions, for each of them, there is a separate price that it is available at where it is getting traded in the market. Now I can compute the price of it using a synthetic uh, mechanism. I have just now, uh, we have uh, just now looked at. Now if there is a big difference in the price of the original as well as the synthetic created, that is where people can exploit profits by either buying the synthetic and selling the original or selling the synthetic and buying the original. How can we exploit that kind of an opportunity? That is what I will look at with this small numerical example. Let's say right now, a six month call option with an exercise price of 220 is currently trading at 25 okay let's uh, take it onto a spreadsheet so we are talking about a six month call option right exercise price of 220 so x is given as 220 trading at 25 so the call option price is 25 the current stock price is 210 <coughs> so yes i can take it as 210 then what else assuming a risk free rate of six percent calculate the price of the synthetic put option now you tell me how i should compute the synthetic put option c plus x by e power rt or x by 1 plus r to the power t present value of x 
minus s that is what is the synthetic value of the put option okay c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t here i am talking about 6 months so i'll take it as 1 plus r to the power t minus s so this is what is coming out as the price of a put option based on this call put parity relationship now let me assume that the actual market price so this is how i derive the no arbitrage price of the put option using the call put parity relationship means ideally ideally the put option price for this kind of a stock should be or for this kind of an option on this kind of a stock should be 28.68 but let me assume two scenarios the put option price in the market is 32 versus put option price in the market is 25 so what would we do this is the actual these are the two various uh, scenarios suggesting the actual price of the put option in the market now how do i use this opportunity what i would be doing is if it is 32 i will make a strategy saying sell put and buy or go long on the synthetic because synthetic is 28.68 the original is 32 so what i will say is sell the original and buy the synthetic so when i am buying the synthetic what is happening okay let's look at the transaction now buy a call so when i am buying a call it is costing me 25 bucks buy a stock when i am uh, sorry sell a stock right sell stock that is the synthetic position so when i am selling a stock i am going to get 210 i am shorting it today when i am buying a call i am paying 25 i am shorting a stock today i am getting 210 and i am talking about buy a bond whose uh, uh, with a cash x by 1 plus r to the power t so 220 by 1 plus r to the power 0.5 so have 213 rupees using 213 rupees buy a bond so what is happening today you just look at this position now you have right now sold a stock right you have right now sold a stock 200 and you got 210 bucks with that 210 bucks you have actually a thought of buying a bond wherein uh, uh, which would be uh, costing you 213 bucks and you are also thinking of buying a call option which is worth 25 so what is the uh, what is the overall transaction in this case <coughs> in this case your overall transaction cost or your overall cost is around 28.68 bucks but you have sold one put option because you have sold one put option you are going to get 32 bucks today means you are already net you are already net 3.31 positive today right now look at uh, after six months what is going to happen after six months whatever may be the market price right you can assume uh, any market price on that day we have sold a put and we have bought a call for the same exercise price now this bond 
after six months will give me 220 bucks right because i have bought a bond on the maturity it is going to give me 220 bucks assume that on that day the stock price it may go up to 225 or 200 or whatever it is we can assume any number assume that the stock price is going to 225 because you have sold a stock now you have to buy it back there so assume that you are buying it back at 225 you are losing 15 and at the same time you have bought a call option for a strike price of 220 but the market price has gone to 225 so you are going to get a benefit of 5 there so this is what is your position there and look at uh, selling a put you have sold a put option for 220 and the other party because you have uh, sold a put option uh, for 220 the other party will because the market price is 225 the other party will not exercise the put at all so what you are left with on that day is 225 minus uh, 15 210 is what you are uh, left with so what is typically uh, happening is whatever may be the scenario on that on that maturity date there is no loss that you are incurring because uh, the, the the as per as far as uh, this you are buying a call you are because you have bought a call you are buying the stock at a predetermined uh, price itself so you have to buy it at 220 itself on that day so you, you are buying the stock at 220 you are uh, uh, because you have bought a call as well as sold, uh, sold a stock you can even uh, buy back the stock at 220 having a profit so what is typically uh, happening in this uh, transaction is you can create an arbitrage profit by directly entering into selling a put option and buying uh, the synthetic or vice versa right because uh, on that day you will have 220 bucks using that 220 bucks simple look at it simple on that day you will have 220 bucks because the bond will give you 220 and uh, you need to buy back the call buy back buy back the stock and you can buy it at 220 because you have already bought a call option so you can buy it exactly at 220 on that day so this entire transaction you are ending up with zero because you are buying the stock at 220 and the bond has given you 220 so you are left with a zero position after six months and this put option will get expired so you are left with a zero position after six months whereas today you are having a positive position of 3.31 3.31 uh, 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 dollars so because of this you have logged in a profit today without any kind of a risk in future whether the market price let's say on that day the stock price goes to 200 you will not exercise your call option rather you will uh, buy back your stock at 200 right from the market if the market price goes down right you you will not exercise the call option you will buy the stock at 200 from the market whereas uh, because you have sold a put for 220 the other party will sell the stock at 220 right because you have uh, sold a, a put the other party has bought the put so when the market price is down the party will exercise it so the party will sell the stock at 220 uh, for you whereas uh, your bond has given you 220 